Hello folks, um, Lewis John McGivney here from NASA JPL's PODAC. I'm here today to, to present PODAC Pi, a Python utility library for interacting with NASA JPL's PODAC and a number of other oceanography related web services which are out there, including the uh, Ocean Colour Web as well as some of the other web services available at PODAC. Okay, so what's on the agenda for this tutorial? Number one is where did Kodak actually developed um, and for, for what purposes and who owns and develops it. We'll move on to user developer level documentation such that if you wish to consume this library within your workflows, you know where to go to read about functionality. Number three is Kodak Pi availability within the Python packaging ecosystem. In particular, how to go about very easily getting Pi Kodak Pi via the PyPy platform and Conda as well, two of the popular packaging ecosystems. Number four here is an example or examples using um, Kodak Pi within the popular Jupyter Notebook environment such that you can reproduce what I'm doing within this tutorial and you can easily um, mock up your own examples for obtaining, uh, accessing and discovering data at Podak and some of the other services offered through the Podak library. And then basically we'll conclude at that stage. So let's dive into number one. Where is Podak Pi developed? Well, Podak Pi was initially developed um, as a side project of my own really. And we had made the decision to try and open source the code base very early on. And it happened to be I came across and I'm a big advocate of the GitHub open source organization for NASA, which we ended up um, dedicating and, and persisting the source code over to. So right now, there is no real ownership of the Podak Pi library. As you can see here, it's available under the NASA GitHub org under the Podak Pi project. Um, all of the source code is available here and we use issues for tracking all development. We also push releases directly from the functionality available through GitHub as well. So everything's managed through this project. Just briefly on the README for the project, what you will see are a number of badges here. These badges contain hyperlinks through to various locations and project resources, such as the PyPy, which I'll show very soon, the doc documentation, um, Anaconda, how you would go about obtaining through Anaconda. Readme also provides an overview of what the project is, what it does offer, the web services and the, the core functionality, and additional Kodak Pi and um, NASA uh, Ocean Covered web, web services. But it also goes pretty in depth into how you would install it from both of the platforms mentioned previously as well as source. Where to go for examples, how to run tests, where the documentation is located at remotely online, as well as how to build the documentation locally if you have the source code for the project. And finally, we have uh, community support and development, as I'd said is mentioned through the GitHub issue tracker. The license, which currently is uh, the Apache license volume 2.0, a uh, very popular open source permissive license and the copyright class export classification, which was obtained through NASA JPL and California Institute of Technology through a new technology report, an MTR, which was filed a number of years ago by myself. So that gives you an overview of, you know, what Podak Pi is, who owns it, it's open source, and where it's really developed. So we'll move on now to um, some of the documentation. Very quickly, just before we do, um, due to the fact that Podak Pi resides within the open source uh, GitHub area for NASA, um, Podak Pi is available through code.nasa.gov. So if you go to code.nasa.gov and you search for Podak Pi, you'll see that Podak Pi appears here as one of a number of hundred projects which have been open sourced by NASA. Um, so that's for um, greater visibility really to consumers of the project. So on to documentation. Our remote documentation is hosted on Read the Docs. 
This documentation is generated based upon every commit to the source code. So this stuff keeps up to date with development. Very simply, you can search for APIs or you can search for content present within the doc project documentation. The navigation bar on the left hand side enables you to navigate through to the introduction for the project, quick start, and then it dives into API level documentation. For example, if we wanted to see the web services tab, we would click on web services and we have developer level documentation here. For users that want an introduction to Podak Pi, we, we provide an overview of what the project is, similar to what I'm verbally um, explaining just now. And then we provide a quick start, which provides code examples as to how to use the library, some convenience functions, um, and then the basic API functionality, how you would go about retrieving dataset metadata, for example, how you would go about retrieving granule metadata, for example. Each one of these is linked through to the developer le level documentation uh, should you want to go and um, scope that out further. Okay, so moving on to the availability of Podak Pi within the packaging ecosystem for Python. Podak Pi is available through PyPy, probably the most popular um, packaging platform in the Python ecosystem. And very simply, we've navigated here to pypy.org forward slash project forward slash Podak Pi, or you can just navigate to pypy.org and search for Podak Pi in the, in the search bar. You'll then land at this landing page, which would be Podak Pi and then the most recent release. Quite simply, in order to install Podak Pi on your environment, uh, you, you require um, Python, of course, but you would simply copy this, com this um, command here, which is pip the package manager, and you're telling it to install and the dependency is Podak Pi. It's as simple as that. Um, on the Conda environment, we wrote a Conda Forge package for Podak Pi, meaning that Conda um, Podak Pi availability within Conda is um, out of the box as well. More importantly here as well, however, the Conda Forge packages enable us to provide packages for 64-bit architecture Linux. 32 and 34-bit Windows architectures, and OS X 64-bit architectures as well. In order to navigate to that to this landing page, again, you go to anaconda.org forward slash Conda Forge, and you look for Podak Pi under there as well. Again, it has basic links back to our documentation, the home for the project, which is under the GitHub organization, a uh, NASA GitHub organization, the license, a number of metrics such as downloads here and we're rapidly approaching 15,000 downloads and at the bottom it actually provides um, the installation instructions for installing Podak Pi under your Conda environment. Okay, so let's have a demonstration of actually installing then the Podak Pi library. So I have a clean terminal here and I believe I had it installed earlier so I'll make an attempt to uninstall, I'll clear my terminal, and then I'm going to just run pip install for that pi. You'll see here that here that the various dependencies which are packaged with Podak Pi are retrieved automatically. And we have successfully installed version 2.1.0, which is the most recent version that we have published of the library. Okay, so now that we have Podak Pi installed, we can skip into the Python terminal and we can import Podak. And then we can do a help command on Podak. Okay, great. What you'll see here is help on what the package offers. This is within the Python interpreter. We'll see here that we have package contents for level 2 subsetting, metadata compliance checking, ocean color, the core Podak web services, and Podak utilities. There is also a tests package which enables you to run unit tests. Fantastic. Okay, so coming back out of the interpreter, we can go back over to our, ter our um, browser here and move on to demonstration of some examples. 
So, within the Podak library on GitHub, the, organ the repository, you can navigate to the examples directory. And essentially what we've stated here is that you've just arrived at our quick start and examples. All of them are delivered under the, Jup the Jupyter Notebooks platform, so they can be run in your environment. You can execute, you can change, and essentially you can prototype use of the library within very simple systems, which should be the Podak Getting Started tutorial, or more complex systems, which is an example of calculating standard deviation from a particular Podak data set. And what we do here is we use Podak Pi as a mechanism for easily obtaining, accessing, discovering data from Podak web services, and then bringing it into a climate modeling toolkit called Apache Open Climate Workbench. We then calculate some metrics and we undertake some uh, climate uh, modeling. And then essentially we, we execute some simple plotting. So what we have here within the examples readme is the, the guide for navigating to the examples directory in, in your local install and then running the Jupyter Notebook. It also tells you how to view the Jupyter Notebook once you have it running. So let's copy these um, commands. We are going to, I'll clear my terminal. I'm going to cd into examples. And if you look now, I'm now under the examples directory under user local product pie. And I'm simply going to start the Jupyter Notebook. This has brought up another notebook in my browser, the notebook server. As I'd said previously, the Podak Pi Getting Started tutorial is the entry point which is covered in the documentation. But for the purposes of this tutorial, what I'm going to go ahead and do is show how Podak Pi can be utilised in part of a more realistic and complex workflow which a scientist or community user might be engaged with. So, we click on that Python notebook. We now are in the notebook itself, running on the notebook server. What we have here is the notebook server permitting us to essentially run um, the code present within the uh, notebook. First, I just clear all cells so that we're starting from scratch. I can then navigate through the notebook. The first cell is, is merely a, a license header. The second cell provides a description of what this example is about. So the Podak Pi integration example essentially integrates Podak Pi within the Apache Open Climate Workbench. And it enables us to load a Podak dataset, execute some mod mod climate model evaluation, and then plot the results. There's a bit more of an in-depth um, description of what that looks like. But most importantly, the data set which we'll be picking up will provide a, a DOI for that data set, which we can go and navigate to directly within your browser. That data set happens to be this cross-calibrated, multi-platform, ocean surface wind vector data set, which is at level three. And admit that this essentially, in the terminal, in the browser just now, is an overview of the core metadata record, the dataset landing page for this dataset. Going back to the notebook. In the next cell, we run some imports. We're importing Podak Pi through Apache Open Climate Workbench as a data source. Um, it should be noted that in order to replicate this exact example, you are required to have Apache Open Climate Workbench installed. We then import some other um, functions from the Open Climate Workbench toolkit. In the next cell, we are defining some contents, constants. The dataset ID we're dealing with, which is essentially the dataset ID pulled directly from the Podak landing page, the persistent ID, we are defining the variable we wish to utilize in this climate model evaluation activity. We have a name for the process and an output plot. We then have the directory at which we wish to download the data we obtain using Podak Pi from Podak. Okay. In this step, 
we're downloading the data set, we're extracting the level 4 granule and the variable from that level 4 granule to the local machine. You can see this is working. What we've printed out here are other level 4 granules which are also available. This is part of the um, utility functionality of the product pie library where we completely lower the barrier to you obtaining level 4 or spatial temporal information, the discovery portion of the, an information retrieval task. So we've, we've downloaded the level 4 granule to our local machine. We have the granule name, which is analysis underscore, and we've we're able to even have a look at some of the granule details. So some of the granule details will provide a lat long range and temporal boundaries. We also have the variable. Okay, in the next step, we're going to build a metric for use in evaluation. This, in this example, the metric that we're using is temporal standard deviation. And we do this by essentially importing the metrics module of Apache Open Climate Workbench and creating an instance of the temporal standard deviation metric. Done. In step three, we're looking to create an evaluation object using the data sets for our metric. In this case, essentially, we're using this uh, cross uh, calibrated metric for that data set. We're going to then execute the run method. Okay, we've completed our model run evaluation and we're ready to move on to essentially plotting what our model run is. So, in this cell, what we're doing essentially is defining a grid shape. We're essentially generating um, specifics about the plot and the range of the subtitles where they should be on the plot. We're stating here that we want to run from 2002 to 2010. And then essentially we're drawing a contour map. So, the output is that we're assessing the results of the evaluation run. The results are of type master array, and from that master array, we're generating contour plot, plot a map using the Open Climate Workbench plotter draw contour map function. The very end of this notebook, we're finally going to draw the image such that we can see what we've generated. This will take two seconds, and we should see a nice image displaying our standard deviation for this cross-calibrated multi-platform ocean surface wind vector data set granule. Okay, folks, the purpose of this exercise here is to really to show how easy Podak Pi makes it to do data discovery and search over the Podak services. This isn't really everything that's available within Podak Pi. Of course, we also have services for Ocean Colour, as well as the Metadata Compliance Checker, Level 2 subsetting uh, at Podak as well. So, you should ho hopefully have seen from those examples, functionality of the toolkit, where the documentation is, where the project's maintained, and how you would go about submitting issues to the issue tracker if you had any issues, and also how to install Podak Pi from popular packaging platforms such as PyPy and Conda Forge. Without further ado, we'll wrap up this presentation by saying thank you very much. If there are questions, please navigate over to the Community Development Forum where you can answer que you can ask questions, you can ask for features, and generally you can report bugs and other development-oriented information. Alternatively, please contact me directly at lewis.j.mcgibney at jpl.nasa.gov. Okay, thank you.